This tweet by DTR Vector led to a massive thread on the use of Dokkan Battle private servers and their effect on the player base as a whole. Now this thread involved multiple notable figures in the community and also showcased some really good takes but also some not so good takes at the same time. And these takes have all culminated into a series of questions that we should be asking, such as, are Dokkan Battle private servers bad? Do they hurt Dokkan's player base and profit? Are they moral or ethical? Let's discuss. Now for anybody confused, uh, let me just quickly explain what Dokkan Battle private servers are. Essentially, they are offline versions of the app that can have every single character in the game rainbowed or certain amount of dupes. You can also implement custom characters, custom events, and many different types of things. It's essentially like a sandbox or a playground, if you will. I've showcased a few of these sorts of events and characters on my channel before in the form of shorts and videos. You can check them out here. Examples of these private servers include Dokkan Entropy, which I personally use, KX Dokkan, which is the one reference in the original tweet, and also Dokkan Phoenix. So those are what private servers actually are. So the original tweet by DTR Vector mentions that Entropy is currently down at that time, and if any KX Dokkan Battle private server users know if the Tanabata Super Saiyan 4 Goku that was recently released is on there. To which notable figure in the community, the Truth DT, responds, they are all going to be down soon, so get your playing in now. Which in my opinion is a very strange way of replying to a tweet like this, but anyway. This sort of reaction obviously didn't go unnoticed in the tweet here. We have somebody else saying that he sounds like a super villain. And Truth responds again by saying that I'm the hero, you guys are the villains here. But what does he mean by this? Why is Truth saying this sort of thing? Now for context, Truth actually does use private servers himself. So what he does is showcases of, for example, units that haven't been released yet. And he puts them in different sorts of situations in different stages of the current game meta to determine if it's worth summoning for. So pay to win players and free to play players. Anybody can look at these showcases and see uh, if the brand new unit or the unit in question is good or not. So while he is a little bit of a hypocrite while saying this, there is a point to be made here. If everybody's always using the private servers instead of playing the game, then what reason would anybody have to play the game? That's a sort of question that should be considered. And furthermore, private servers like these can be extremely useful for people who don't have the specific units or if they have maybe addictions to Gasha. But if people do slowly get access to these private servers, it will eventually spread and it will bring Dokkan down to a point where the developers and the proper authorities must take action and fully remove them. The issue with this statement, however, is that the number of people that use private servers is not as high as you think. It's like less than a single digit percentage. I'm not, I don't know the exact number, but it is most definitely not over a couple thousand. Why do I say this? It's because it's actually somewhat difficult to obtain these private servers, depending on the type of device that you have. For example, for me, on an iOS device, I have to connect it to a computer and then, you know, sideload an app and this sort of thing. It's a weird process. For an Android, you need to use like an APK or a proxy. There's a whole different process there. So you do need some other tools to be able to access the actual private servers. To continue, as I stated before, private servers aren't actually connected to the Dokkan Battle main servers, so they don't interfere with World Tournament or Chain Battle or anything like that. So they don't influence the game in those sorts of ways. And yeah, I don't really agree with calling people that use private servers villains. I think that's kind of stupid. You shouldn't really say that sort of thing. Private servers are tools. They're there, they exist. If you want to use them, and if you do use them, good on you. If you don't, whatever, your choice. I don't think this is something that the community should be getting very angry over, but I digress. The good thing about these servers as well is that many people can use them to, as I said before, judge units before they summon for them or use them on their actual Dokkan Battle accounts. And what I mean by this is that there's also the aspect of using them yourself, having a team that may be similar to yours or maybe a team that you're trying to go for with units that you want to save for or summon for, and then using them in situations you think you'll be at in the future. 
So essentially it's testing them. All of this falls back into having the tools necessary to improve yourself within the game. I've said this before and I'll say it again. You are the only person that's in charge of your account. You're the one that's playing the game. It's your experience. If you take advice from other people, that's to be considered. If you want to take their advice and do what they say, that's your choice. But you're the one that plays the game. Just because someone else says one thing is good doesn't necessarily mean it's the right thing for you. It's your experience. Now, as far as answering the other questions in regards to private servers, is there anything wrong with them ethically or morally? I don't believe so. Because once again, while they don't affect the main servers, another thing that should be noted is that they also have some limited functions. For example, in Dokkan Entropy, uh, you can't access story mode or different types of events they have been withheld. And I think that's actually good because it differentiates between the main game and the private servers, which I, I, I've said it before, I think the best description for them is a sandbox because you can just do whatever you want with them. And that's pretty much it there. So if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree as well. Smash like, smash subscribe and see you around.